improved today, but 783 yards rushing, 278 yards passing. He is a lot of their offense today, and he must contribute in some capacity to make sure Georgia Southern handles that triple option the way it should be run. And what Georgia Southern has to worry about is the no-huddle attack from Appalachian State. Richie Williams, one of the most accurate passers in all of college football. Richie Williams leads this team in total offense, career total offense leader, 6,059 yards passing, 1,078 yards rushing. As Appalachian State goes, so does he. If he's having a great game, they can move the ball downfield, pick up first downs, and control this game with his passing and with his feet. And at defensive end, Marcus Morell is having as good a year as anyone in this league. Outstanding defensive end, 5.5 sacks. If he can get penetration upfield today, look for him to create havoc in Georgia Southern's backfield. So the stage is set. A big one in the SoCon up next. Mike Seawalks, Eagles of Georgia Southern against Appalachian. More from Boone when we come back after this. of Appalachian State take the field here at Kid Brewer in Boone as they play host to the Eagles of Georgia Southern. As you notice, the Mountaineers today are dressed out in all black, and there's a reason for that. We learn more about Black Saturday as we send it down to the third member of our broadcast team. Down on the field, here's Corey Kessler. Yeah, that's right, guys. It's such a beautiful sight to see here 3,000 feet above sea level at Kid Brewer Stadium because it is Black Saturday. As you mentioned, Bob, what is Black Saturday? It's a long-standing tradition that the home team has had here because the home team wears black shoes, black socks, black pants, black jerseys, black helmets, and the fans, in support of their team, they all dress in black, and they look like it's working. They have 12 wins in a row here, 13 regular season wins, and guess what? Their home record, 165 and 58 with five ties all all time. We'll see if they can get them past Georgia Southern here at Kid Brewer Stadium. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Corey. In fact, this Appalachian team has had a pretty good success against one of the vaunted outfits in the SoCon, Georgia Southern. They have won four of the last five against the Eagles in games played in this stadium. And all time against Georgia Southern, Appalachian is 7-3-1. and one against the Eagles in this arena. Georgia Southern has won the toss, and they will receive the football to start things here this afternoon. And keep in mind, this is a Georgia Southern team that scores a ton of points. They average just under 37 per game. Georgia Southern coming in at 4-2 overall, 3-1 in the SoCon. And they have scored points on five of their six first possessions this season. So this is a club that can really put a lot of points and a lot of pressure on the defense right away. These, these kids for Georgia Southern has the ability to move the ball up and down the field. In talking to the coaches at Appalachian State yesterday, that was one of the things that concerned them as how quickly Georgia State can strike and run in that triple option. If your defense is not disciplined, the minute they fall asleep and make a mistake, you get the big pass or the big run on you, and that's what Appalachian State has to guard against today. For Appalachian, John Roach, Julian Roach rather, is going to be kicking things off, and back deep, Lewis Barr and Reggie McCutcheon. Now, Teddy Kraft, who is the great return man, is not here. He's back in Statesboro, out with turf toe. So a big loss for Georgia Southern. This is Barr at the three. And knocked down just shy of the 16-yard line. They'll mark him at the 15 as Titus Howard got downfield on special teams to make the tackle. And for Georgia Southern, Darius Miley is the quarterback. Smiley coming on to make the start today in replacement of Jason Foster. Foster out all week with an infection in his right ankle. And so Smiley will be the starter at quarterback today for Georgia Southern. He's a junior from Pensacola, Florida. 
First and 10 for the Eagles from the 15. And nothing doing right away to Jermaine Austin. His first touch of the afternoon. What a talented running back. And one of the reasons that they're so good up front as we check our Carolina Ford starting lineup is the offensive line. Now, it's a retooled offensive line in Statesboro this year. Jensen and Estrada are both sophomores. Wayne's a junior. Moat is a senior or is a sophomore. And you look at the backs and receivers. Keep an eye on McCutcheon. He's a, a little scat back at 6'1", 164, but he can run. Over the 20 and one out pop out of the 22. What a hit by Jeremy Wiggins, number eight on Maynard. Jeremy Wiggins came up just now and let Georgia Southern know it's not going to be an easy task today to turn that corner. For Appalachian State, the Carolina Ford starters defensively. We talked about Morell and how good he is. A veteran linebacking crew with West Kelly and Smith and Corey Lynch, the safety. Outstanding back after an injury-plagued 2004 campaign. And again, it's Austin, no go. And Appalachian is going to force a punt right away. The ball shy of the 25 by about a yard. And what a defensive stop for the Mountaineers right away. Big time stop by Appalachian State and probably the worst thing that could have happened to Georgia State. Smiley needed to get a couple of first downs under his belt. It didn't happen. Let's see how that affects him the rest of the game. Number two is Dexter Jackson. Back deep for Appalachian. Dan Jordan, the sophomore, is the punter. So three and out for the Eagles. That one nearly blocked. Jackson. Can't get away and is wrestled down at the 30-yard line. As Lance Turner did a great job getting downfield to make the tackle. The quarterback today for the Appalachian State Mountaineers, Richie Williams. And this is a no-huddle offense. It is not a hurry-up no-huddle, but a no-huddle nonetheless. When we were here last year, Reggie Williams in the Furman game, we showed you some highlights of it earlier, hit 28 straight passes at one point and went 40 for 44 to set national records against the Paladins. He is quite a talent. He is a big-time talent. If he gets it going downfield today, I really don't think the Georgia Southern Corners can keep up with what Appalachian State wide receiver and quarterback want to do to them. And Williams wants the throw, dumps it to Richardson. At the 40. Richardson bounces off his own man, gets a couple of extra yards to the 44. And boy, this is a fired up bunch of Mountaineers right now. Zachary the tackle. First down for Appalachian. The true sophomore, Kevin Richardson, with the catch. And look at quarterback here, Richie. He throws the ball out to Richardson, and Richardson has nothing but real estate up there. He cuts it in there, and look at it. I think right now, Richardson has the ability to catch passes out the backfield all game. 26-yard pass play, penalty flags. Nice grab by Little on the far side, and out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Good hands by Jermaine Little, the senior wide receiver. And we've got a whistle against Georgia Southern. Gene Hartley, the veteran referee, in charge of this one this afternoon. Offside, 92 defense. Penalties declined. Second down. So a gain of close to nine yards. As we take a look at our Carolina Ford starters for Appalachian out front, Oliver's an all-conference performer at left tackle. We introduced you to Richardson a moment ago. Johnson and Little, outstanding wide receivers. Zach, and the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina, makes a ton of clutch plays for this offense. It's second down. And we'll call it two for the Mountaineers. Van Williams 
after faking to Richardson, calls his own number and is close to a first down. Jack Sherman, the defensive end, made that last tackle. As we check the rest of the Georgia Southern defensive starters, our Carolina Ford starting lineups. At linebacker, John Mooring, number 47, keep an eye on him. He leads the team in tackles with 55, 22 more than the second place man. And in that secondary, Lewis Barr picked off a pass against Appalachian in last year's game at Statesboro. Batishon, the intended receiver. Right away, we kind of see what Appalachian State's trying to do today. Short passes, Richie Williams able to get the ball out in the flat just now. Receiver wasn't able to hold on, but I tell you what, they're marching straight down the field, and thus far, Georgia Southern has no, no conclusion to what Appalachian State is trying to do. The no huddle and out of the gun. Here's Williams on the option, Richardson. To the 24 before Tariq Muhammad, senior from Smyrna, Georgia, made the tackle. Richie Williams pitches, pitches the ball out to Kevin Richardson. Very good vision, makes someone miss. That's the key to any running back. He has to have great vision. He has that picked up about seven yards that time. What the coaches talked about with Kevin Richardson was his vision, and this kid enjoys punishing and blocking people. He showed great vision on that play just now. Williams. Back to the line of scrimmage. Still in need of a yard for a first down. John Mooring, the aforementioned, coming over to make the tackle five times this season. Mooring has led the team in tackles. Very active linebackers. Mooring, Rutledge, and Earwood are the top three tacklers on the ball club. Fourth down coming. So a key call here for Jerry Moore and the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Fourth and one. Williams hit the backfield, gets away, spins to the first down at the 17. Jack Sherman made the tackle, but after he bounced off a linebacker, Sherman credited with the stop, but it's a first down for the Mountaineers. And this is what the coaches love about Richie Williams. Look at that athleticism. Shakes a defender. He know he has to get this first down. Penetrates upfield. Move the sticks. That's why this kid is leading this, leading this team and leading this conference in total offense and rushing yards. He refused to go down just now. He knew how important this initial drive was. He had to pick up that first down, and he done what it took to get that done. Jack Sherman did a nice job at defensive end. After initially missing on the tackle, stayed with the play. And brought Williams down. Williams has nine rushing yards. Williams bottled up, reverses his feet. And knocked off his pins at the 19-yard line. Lewis Barr, number two, came up to make that hit. And Lewis Barr had to, to hold his ground there. Had he not, he could have let Williams turn the corner. Look at Williams. He tried to sneak in there, didn't see what he wanted to see, tried to turn the corner, but Lewis Barr stayed where he needed to be, showed the discipline that it takes to stop an athlete like Richie Williams. Second down and 11. First quarter, no score, first possession for the Mountaineers after holding Georgia Southern on the opening drive to three and out. Williams looks to throw, and it's going to be incomplete. Intended for his tight end, Bettis. Earwood with the pop. Third down. Williams actually had Jermaine Little running straight down the chute just now. He was wide open. I guess the play was originated for a tight end drag, but if he would have just been a little bit more patient just now, he had Little running free straight in the end zone. Third and 11. Oh, 
Williams. Incomplete. Fourth down. Nice defensive stand by Georgia Southern. Everybody, they was in a man coverage just now. Everybody was matched up on who they needed to cover, and Williams had nowhere to go with the ball. Georgia Southern needed this stand right now. Hey, they'll take a three-point field goal over a seven-point touchdown any day of the week. Julian Roch will attempt a 37-yard field goal. Good. And with 9.03 to go in the opening quarter, Appalachian draws first blood. Julian with his fifth field goal of the season, putting the Mountaineers up 3-0 in the first in Boone. Back in Boone, North Carolina, 9.05 remaining, opening period. Appalachians, Julian Roush with a 37-yard field goal to open the scoring, and now he will kick it away for the Mountaineers. An 11-play, 51-yard drive that took 3 minutes and 46 seconds off the clock. And a very big ball game for these two teams. Neither can afford a loss, as each has suffered a defeat. Appalachian last week to Furman, and Georgia Southern about a month ago to Wofford. McCutcheon on the return. 37-yard line, and that's where Georgia Southern will set up shop. It'll be interesting to see if the Mountaineers, Curtis, can maintain the defensive intensity with which they started the game. And the coaches spoke yesterday of Reggie McCutcheon's explosiveness. Look at it. He finds that seam, and he is one tackle away from taking that to the house. McCutcheon has to step up today because Teddy Kraft is out with that turf toe. Smiley at quarterback Austin. Grinds it to the 43. Zod Kelly, fifth year senior. Making the tackle at his middle linebacking spot. Second on the ball club and tackles with 36. Austin is just a magnificent running back. And of course, the great Adrian Peterson set the bar so high years ago down at Statesboro, but Austin is just a terrific young man and a great runner. Tough, tough, tough inside runner. This kid is, he loves to punish tacklers. And if you watch him, every time he touches the ball, it's six, seven yards. Same two for the quarterback, Darius Smiley, the junior. Taken down by Hunter, gains over the midfield stripe to the Appalachian 47-yard line. And again, Bob, you were you was speaking earlier about Peterson. He set the bar very, very high. But I can tell you, that bar is not too far away from what Jermaine Austin has been bringing to the table week in and week out. 7.3 yards of carry, that's big time. To the 44 for Austin. Marcus Morrell, the left end. He's from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Making the tackle, Austin. He and uh, the usual starter, Foster, a great one-two punch. Both average right at 130 yards a game. And when Austin continues to pick up three, four, five yards a carry, he's actually controlling the tempo of this game right now. Austin, 13 yards and fourth carry. Smiley dancing and taken down at the 47-yard line. Coming up was Monte Smith, the bandit linebacker, and getting some help from Jason Hunter to make a big tackle on Smiley. Bandit showed his athleticism just now because Smiley seems to be a very elusive quarterback, similar to what Jason Foster tries to do back there. So the bandit has to be very disciplined in what he does on defense against Georgia Southern. Third down and 10. Smiley wants to throw. Intercepted. Rose out of bounds at the 20 at 31 yard line. Justin Rose, the red shirt sophomore, picked that one clean on the far side. 
Justin Rose made a big time play just now. Look at it. He's looking at what Smiley's on. Smiley eyeing the receiver down. Rose makes a big time break on the ball. I thought he was taking it to the house. I was getting excited. As a corner, you want to take it to the house. He got a nice break on the football. I, was, I thought he was gone. I'm ready to draw the house right now. He got knocked out, but that's a momentum changer for Appalachian State, and it can't be any good for Smiley to have two possessions, one three and out, and his second one, he throws an interception. I look for Jason Foster to be back in this game real soon the next time Georgia Southern gets the ball. Four wide receivers for the Mountaineers. And a middle screen is snuffed out. And the tackle made at the 33. Richardson dropped by John Mooring, number 47. And it looks like, Bob, the momentum is on Appalachian State side right now. Georgia Southern has done absolutely nothing to let us know they want to play football yet today. Their biggest thing was to stop Appalachian State from, from scoring a touchdown previously. Let's see, can they stop them here? Second and 10. To the 22-yard line. Beard made the tackle on Kevin Richardson. The wind is becoming a factor. A beautiful day. Temperature is in the 60s. But the weatherman told us that as the afternoon wears on, the wind will be picking up and maybe as strong as 30 miles an hour. And some of the pine trees behind the visitor's stand, we'll show them to you in just a moment as Richardson grinds his way down to the 17-yard line. And, Bob, it appears that Appalachian State decides on this drive they're going to run directly at the interior of Georgia Southern's front four. And thus far, they're able to pick up four or five yards every time. So look for them to continue this trend. If Georgia Southern can't stop them, I can't see why they would go to anything else. Little the man in motion. Williams out of the gun, gets to Richardson. Ryan Kranz, the tackle. Again, right up the gut, they are running directly at Georgia Southern. The guys up front for Georgia Southern, Kranz, Taylor, Beard, Sherman, one of those guys has to make a play now. Two to six for Richardson. Appalachian has totally dominated this opening quarter. Look at this. Right up the gut again. Offensive line. The Hogs separating themselves from the defensive line. Big time run by Richardson. Kevin leaping to the three. Sherman the tackle. And it looks like to me Appalachian State is saying we're going to go mano mano. If you cannot stop me up the middle, we're going to continue to pound you time and time again until you show us you can stop our running game. And what a difference a year makes. Last year, it was just the opposite. Georgia Southern ran rough shot over the Mountaineers. There's a pass to the end zone that's intercepted, but a penalty flag. Lewis Barr heads up, made the catches. Williams thought he had a free play coming. Rich was trying to get a free one just now. He thought he could sneak one in the corner of the end zone, but luckily Barr was on top of his game, picked the ball off, but it, I don't think it's going to be any good. Offside, 92 defense, five-yard penalty, go half the distance to goal, still first down. Second time that Kranz has jumped today. Look at our Richie. He's trying to steal one here. He knows he has a free play. He thought he can get one in the end zone. That play like was against Georgia time. Southern. <laughs> <laughs> the give to Hennessy. And the backup running back, the freshman from Morganton, North Carolina. Gets it close. 
inside the one. Taylor the tackle. Tough, tough, tough yardage to get inside the five. That's when these linemen has to be more, much more aggressive. Let's see if Appalachian State runs up the middle for like the sixth time. Hennessy. Fumble. Did he get in? Let's see. There was a whistle. And we'll let the officials sort this one out. I believe it's a touchdown. That is going to be interesting. Very on the field. Once he scored a touchdown before the ball was fumbled. Therefore, we have a touchdown. Give him six, and it's 9 nothing Appalachian as Trey Hennessy takes it in from a yard away. And now the point after with three and a half to go in this opening quarter. We welcome those of you who are watching the Wake Forest Boston College game to Boone, North Carolina. And we've got a good one cooking here. The Mountaineers have dominated this opening quarter, as you can see by that score. Three and a half to go in the opening period. Trey Hennessy, just a moment ago, took it in. Had possession as he crossed the goal line. The touchdown stands. Our score at Kid Brewer. It's Appalachian 10 and Georgia Southern nothing. Trey Hennessy took it in from a yard away. And Appalachian has taken a 10-0 lead over Georgia Southern here late in the first quarter. Julian Ross, just a moment ago, added the PAT. Hennessy thanks his lineman, as every good running back should. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're looking at exactly what put Appalachia State down here. Nice interception by the defensive back. Inside, tough, tough, tough running by Kevin Richardson. And here we are. McCutcheon. Trying to get to the outside. To the 26. Eight plays, 31 yards for Appalachian, resulting in the Hennessy touchdown run. Now a Georgia Southern offense that cranks out practically 400 yards a game. Curtis, they have a grand total of 25 yards in the opening period this afternoon. And it just looks like to me, Bob, that Appalachian State is one step quicker than Georgia Southern yet today. Jason Foster is in a quarterback and a loose ball. The quarterback is able to claim it. Let's get the latest on Foster. He didn't start today. Corey, what's the story? Well, he missed all practice all week, Bob. He has an infection in his foot. It was a game-time decision. The coach decided to go with him after going down 10-0, and uh, looks like he was a little rusty. We'll see if he can pick it up here with a uh, second down. An infection in his right ankle, which is uh, kind of an odd injury for a football player. Maynard, Austin, Jefferson are the backs. And on the toss, here comes Jefferson. Nothing there. Morrell stands him up. And again, Bob, it just looks like Appalachian State is a step quicker than Georgia Southern today. Morrell, who we spoke about earlier, great penetration upfield. We talked about that penetration prior to the game. If he's able to live in Georgia Southern's backfield today, they're going to have trouble trying to create opportunities out of that triple option. Not much going right offensively for the Eagles, third and ten. Foster. Good ankle tackle that time by Corey Lynch. He wouldn't let him get away. But it is not enough for a first down. Corey Lynch, a very outstanding safety for Appalachian State. He has to fill those alleys all day because they're going to, it's, it's going to be avenues today where Foster is going to look to to try to hit it up in there and make big plays. Uh, Corey Lynch, the safety, has to be able to fill those holes. He just showed what he can do just now. If he keeps that up again, it's going to be a long day for Georgia Southern. Dan Jordan, and they fake it. Mooring. 
to the 33 yard line. What a play. Great call by the coaching staff of Georgia Southern. They know they need a, a spark. What better thing to do than to have a fake punt? Look at their sideline right now. Punter jumps up like he was about to catch the ball. Great situation. If he beats this return guy, that's a touchdown. Georgia Southern needed this spark. They have great field position right now. Let's see what they do with it. Jefferson. Taken down by Lynch. Now you'll see the punter think like it's gone over his head. Jordan sold it well. He sold it very well. And the hole opened up. Big time hole. All he had to do was beat one man. But the key to that play was a momentum uh, switch. Georgia Southern needed something. They just got it. This is their golden opportunity to make some noise in this first half. That was a 36-yard pickup as Austin takes it inside the 25. That's got to feel good for John Moore, too. Here's a linebacker, gets and cuts the ball offensively, <laughs> and he had one of the biggest plays of the day. Thus far, that is the biggest play for Georgia Southern. Somebody got to step up, and he was able to do that. They needed somebody to pick this team up. The sidelines more lively now. I think if they can put points on the board in, in any in any way, three, seven, whatever, they will be able to make some noise in this first half rather than being three and out, which is what they've been thus far. That's the end of the first quarter at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina. Southern Conference football on FSN South. Richie Williams and the Mountaineers scored early and led 10 nothing. But now Georgia Southern after the fake punt on the comeback trail. Today's game is being brought to you by your Carolina Ford dealers driving the Carolinas, BB&T, Branch Banking and Trust, and by Food Lion, extra low prices. Bob Rathbun, Curtis Bayham, Corey Kepsler back with you in Boone. A 10-0 lead, but Georgia Southern as we start the second with the football in Austin, spins his way to the 20. In the first quarter, Georgia Southern rushed for 76 yards. Of course, 36 of them coming on the fake punt. Appalachian pretty well balanced. Their 80 yards divided 46 rushing, 34 passing. And Georgia Southern has to feel a lot much more comfortable now that Foster is in the game. If he can create some mismatches, I think they may be able to put points on the board right now. Foster on the toss, Maynard. Tangled up that time with Andrews, his teammate. Monte Smith made the tackle. Foster fakes it in there, pitches it out quick. I think he may, may have pitched a little bit too quick had he tried to get a little bit more pressure on the outside linebacker. That play could have picked up an additional five to seven yards. But he's a little rusty. He's a little rusty. He missed practice all week. Let's see how he rebounds without any practice time. Austin to the 15. As a sophomore, Jermaine Austin was the SoCon Offensive Player of the Year. That was 2003. He's picked up over 40 600 yards in his illustrious career. And it looks like to me, Bob, most of his yardage is coming between the tackles, which tells me he's a tough inside runner, but he looks like he has enough speed to break the big one. Big physical kid, he will be hitting the ball in between the tackles most of this game. Third and four, Foster goes nowhere as Suter jumped on his back. It's going to be fourth down. Jason Foster on the Joe carry. Suter, the fifth-year senior from Tarboro, North Carolina, with a big play. Foster tries to hand off, 
to Austin. Looks like he was trying to follow right behind him on a semi-quarterback draw, but big time penetration by the upfront guys of Appalachia State destroyed the play. 32-yard field goal attempt for Jonathan Dudley. He's never missed in his Georgia Southern career. A perfect 13 for 13. This one, no good. And you wonder about the wind. Timeout, 12.30, second quarter. Appalachian on Black Saturday. Blanking Georgia Southern. Twelve thirty remaining, second quarter, and a ten nothing lead for Appalachian. The Mountaineers get it back after the missed field goal by Dudley. And Georgia State needed those three points. Momentum now. Georgia Southern needed that momentum right now, but they lost it. Let's see if their defense can step up to the plate and make Appalachian work for this first down. Richie Williams changes the play after he looked to the bench. Play clock draining. Richardson breaks into the clear. What an effort. Inside the 10 to the 7. Jason Earwood saved the touchdown, but what a play call at the line to spring Richardson. Big time run by Kevin Richardson. He refused to go down. He made some cuts on that run just now. He was looking to take that one to the house. Look at it. Ball up the middle. Hole. A big time block up front. Look at the hole. The hall. Wide open hole. Shakes the defender. He's taking it to the house. He's looking for that speed. Quarterback shuffles him up a little bit. Stops him from scoring. But I tell you what. Richardson had an opportunity there to get that one in the end zone. Hennessy grinds it to the two. That was a 73-yard run by Kevin Richardson. Hennessy came in to let Richardson catch his breath on the sideline. That 73-yard run by Kevin Richardson, the longest of his career and one of the longest in Appalachian history. Kevin Richardson has been running in between the tackles most of the game. He was, when, when he got an opportunity to see some daylight, he ran to it, looked for him to get the ball two or three times down here and put up that TD. Williams. Good lateral pursuit by the Eagles. They not only covered Williams, but they took away the pitch. Took away the pitch, had nice penetration that time by Georgia Southern up front, guys. That's what they have to do to slow Richie Williams and Kevin Richardson down. They have to get penetration up front again with these guys, Brian Krantz, Taylor, Larry Beard, and Jack Sherman. Third and goal. 10.45 and counting in the second. Williams to Richardson. Give it six. Julian Rouse to kick the PAT. 16 to nothing, Appalachian. 17 to nothing, Appalachian. Special, special play just now by Kevin Richardson. A break in the action, 10.38 to go in the second. Richardson with his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. This is a score that is going to open some eyes in the world of 1AA football. 17-0 now, Appalachian leading. This is the 73-yard run by Richardson, the centerpiece to an eight-play, 80-yard, uh, rather, four-play drive that consumed a minute 52, and then Richardson got his payday on the two-yard run. Roush getting ready to kick it off. Andrews and McCutcheon back deep. 
for Georgia Southern. And at the goal line, this is McCutcheon. To the 21. Big hit by Billy Riddle, number 25. Well, Georgia Southern, my friend, is up against it. Down 17 in the first half on the road. This is big time right now because Appalachian State is not quitting. They, they are still flying around the ball on offense, defense, and special teams. Thus far, Appalachian State has won the big three. Jason Foster at quarterback. Did not start. Smiley played the first two series. That has done nothing to change the momentum of the game. Foster, good speed to the corner. And a first down for the Eagles at the 35. Foster can run. Last week against Western Carolina, he ran for 149 yards, scored a couple of touchdowns. That was his sixth 100-yard game. And Georgia Southern needs Jason Foster right now to continue to make plays just like that. He has to be able to turn the corner and move the sticks right now because it's 17 zip. They haven't showed any life on offense. He has to be the guy to make them go. Foster, four carries and 22 yards. Austin to the 40. Now, you look at that score with Appalachian on top, 17 to nothing. And remember this, Georgia Southern is a terrific offensive team. They have not been shut out in 10 years. The last time Georgia Southern was blank was against Montana in 1995. That is a very long time. Foster trying to find a hole up to the 45. And this is exactly what Georgia Southern needs right now. They need to be able to pick up first down, get some type of momentum on their side because thus far in this game, they have not been able to get into the end zone. They need to sustain some type of drive. Foster has to be the guy to make plays, whether it's running, coming off tackle, whatever he needs to do, this kid got to get it done at this point in this game. Georgia Southern one for five on third down, but they pick one up here. As Foster called his own number and gets it out to about the 48-yard line. Brad West made the tackle. And Brad. Coach Seawalk talked about the fact that Foster will have fresh legs today. Well, they're going to make sure those legs get a good working today. He has to be able to carry the ball, throw the ball, whatever it takes to move this team downfield. Andrews in it, the running back spot. And Andrews just a tough yard or two to the 50. Omar Byron, the left tackle, number 95, with the stop and your starter. And with the triple option, Bob, you're going to have these type of plays. Dives, dives, straight up the middle, straight up the middle. What they're hoping for right now is that Appalachian State defenders will not be as disciplined as they need to be and get out of position because the minute they do, that's when the big run of pass is going to happen. First down, Georgia Southern at the 38. Corey Lynch, Monte Smith there, but unable to deny Brandon Andrews, the senior. Last year, coming onto the scene in the opening game at Georgia when Austin got hurt. And Brandon Andrews is not much of a drop-off from Jermaine Austin based on what the coaches told us. He's a tough inside runner, able to move the sticks as well. He just needs more opportunities, but right now he has to carry the inside load because Austin is not in the game. Well, he's back in right now. Here's Foster rolling. The defense surrounds him. 
to the 36 before Hunter was credited with the tackle. You talk about Brandon Andrews. And he's been a career backup senior from Swansboro, but he's got over a thousand career rushing yards. Thousand yards, and that's nothing to sleep on when you're backing up guys like Jermaine Austin, who has all of those yards. But he knows as a senior where he fits in for this team, and he fits in to that slot very well. Only one pass attempt, and that was intercepted for Georgia Southern. Here's Foster giving to Austin. To the 32. Jermaine Austin on the carry. Hunter the stop. And Appalachian State's defense is not making it easy for Georgia Southern in between the trenches. Hunter and those guys are getting the penetration that they need consistently to stop the big run. The key to this defense should be if they'll be disciplined enough to do that for four quarters. Third down and five. Austin, what a hold to the 25. First down. Brad West, the tackle, but how about big Chad Moat, number 71, the senior right guard. He blew out a big hole, and Austin is able to pick up the first down. And look at Austin. Great blocking up front. He's a tough in-between-the-tackles type of runner. Every time this kid touches the ball, it's six or seven yards. That's what Georgia Southern has to do to create situations against the Appalachian State defense that they don't want to be in. Andrews. Brandon Andrews on the carry. Lynch the tackle. And Georgia Southern getting a little momentum together on this drive. It looks like to me everybody's bread and butter today is in the middle of the field. Georgia Southern is attacking Appalachian State similar to the way Appalachian State was attacking them earlier. Straight up the middle. Appalachian State defense has to step up up front and create some type of diversion otherwise they're going to keep running straight up the middle andrews backing it down to the 12 weston of the tackle brad west is quite the warrior from clemson south carolina he had major off-season shoulder injury and a lot of guys wouldn't have made it back but here is brad in in his senior season, third on the ball club and tackles it as tough as they come. Shoulder surgery, playing that position, he has to be tough, and he shows right there. He, he just enjoys playing football, and that's the key. When you get a kid that enjoys playing this game, injuries may slow them down, but it won't stop what they're trying to accomplish. Austin down to the nine-yard line before Byron stopped him. Brad's dad, Ron, the defensive line coach at Clemson. Four minutes and 15 seconds. Remaining in our second quarter, 17-0 Appalachian, but Georgia Southern with its first bonafide threat. Penalty flag. Friday right, snap, false start. 66 offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Timeout. Appalachian State. First charge timeout. And it comes with 4.05 remaining in the second quarter. Mike Seawalks, Eagles facing a second down and 12 when we come back. Southern Conference football at FSM South continues from Western North Carolina in a moment. Georgia Southern has been stunned, but they're scrambling to try to get back into this game. Down 17-0 with 4.05 to go in the first half. And they've got the football inside the 15. And about the 14-yard line, we'll call it second down at 12. You see what the, the drive has entailed to date. Dickerson, a lonesome end to the top of your screen. Foster taken down. Joe Suter, number 56. And this all goes back to the previous play. Five-yard penalty. Georgia Southern needs momentum. That's taken away from momentum. 
And when you continue to do that, play in and play out during the game, it actually fires the other team's defense up. Appalachian State is saying every time these guys get inside, they cannot score on us. Let's see what's going to happen on this play. Third down at 13. Here's Foster to pass. Under pressure. And he's sacked back at the 22 by Morrell. Number two in the SoCon and sacks. The big man from Fayetteville has another one. And Foster's back to pass. Appalachian State fired up. Look at, look at Morrell. All over the place. That's his six sacks, six and a half sacks thus far this year. Again, Appalachian State does not believe Georgia Southern can score on them. They're going to try to keep them out the end zone. 38 yard attempt by Dudley. No good. This young man was a perfect 13 for 13 in his career coming to Boone, and he's 0 for 2 today. Appalachian State's defense does not think Georgia Southern can penetrate that goal line, and they are doing everything in their power to keep them from scoring right now. I think those players on Appalachian State remember what happened to them last year at Georgia Southern, and you know what payback means. Reggie Williams, a quarterback for the Mountaineers. Running room to the 31 before A.J. Bryant put him on his backside. 2.35 to go, first half. 17 nothing Mountaineers. Appalachian held Georgia Southern to three and out on the first drive of the game, and that set the tone. The Eagles have been in scramble mode ever since. And Williams is just having a field day. And last year, as Curtis pointed out, it was all Georgia Southern down at Statesboro to the tune of 52 to 7. Here is Williams. To the 36. Here Woods the tackle. Let's send it down to the sidelines of Corey Kessler. Yeah, interesting, Bob. Uh, number 97, who just left the uh, field for Georgia Southern. His name is Sher 91, just left the field. He's number, uh, he, he was on the USS Cole. He's a defensive lineman junior for Georgia Southern. He was on the USS Cole that was bombed by Al-Qaeda. He lost his best friend and supervisor, Timothy Saunders, at, and was motivated to play college football after he saw the Georgia Southern game in 1999 in the title game. He's 25 years old and he's playing college football. His dream come true. He doesn't like to talk about the incident from the USS Cole, but 17 lives were lost, including, as I said, his best friend, Timothy Saunders, and uh, he's certainly hoping that he can motivate his team with a win here today. Thanks, Corey. It is quite a story. Taylor from Miami. And this is his first year as a starter. Appalachian first at 10. Williams on the gainer near midfield. Keep one eye on the clock. A minute 20 left of the half. Williams going deep down the sideline. It's going to be incomplete. The intended receiver was Jermaine Little. And it was broken up by Bryant. A little too much air under that one. And it's been the Richie Williams show thus far in this drive. Look at the wide receiver in the corner. They're going back and forth. And I tell you what, Little, if he could have some kind of way switched his body over a little bit, he would have had a chance. But that's their great defensive back coverage. The safety came over the top just like he needs to do. Very good coverage by the Georgia Southern defense. Second and 10 with a minute 16 to go in the hand. Williams, he's got a little this time. Couldn't get out of bounds. Clock continues to move at the Georgia Southern 44-yard line. And it appears to me that Williams has been consistently throwing wherever number two Lewis Barr is today. Most of his pass attempts have been going toward Barr. It's going to be up to Barr to step up to the plate and make a play. To the 37-yard line, Zach Johnson 
First down, Appalachian stops the clock with 45.9. Johnson, the senior from Charlotte, went to Olympic High School. And Williams is giving what the defense is giving. He's taking what the defense is giving him right now. And penalty flags. Motion against Appalachian. 37.4, the time remaining in the first half. We talked about it earlier. Try to snap. False start. 70 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. The major significance of this game, not only in the SOCON, but also in the larger 1AA playoff picture. You have two ranked teams. Jerry Moore's Mountaineers are number 19. Georgia Southern, number 16. And you've got these clubs each with one conference defeat. So the loser of this game is really in a bad way in the conference race, despite the fact that Georgia Southern has Furman later this season at Statesboro. And this game is what I call a test of character. If you want to be at the top of the SOCON conference at the end of the year, this is a game you have to have because these, both of these teams rank nationally. They know the importance of this game and they have to play for four quarters. Not one, not two, but for all four. Williams, quarterback draw. A loss to the 46. Taylor with the play, timeout. Mountaineers with 18.8. They have one timeout remaining. And getting back to uh, Corey's story about uh, Sherrod Taylor, very, very touching situation with this young kid, but he understands what college football means to a lot of kids out there. That's why he's on the field right now. Uh, he had some loss, and, you know, but he's still out there giving 110%. Very touching story that Corey brought to us. 91 what? 18.8, the time remaining. There is Taylor. Now, this Georgia Southern defense a little bit on edge as they have had a difficult time containing Richie Williams and Kevin Richardson. 18.8 seconds left, second down. They have enough time to get two, possibly three plays in if they can get this first down right now. Richardson into the game as he splits out to the top of your screen. Williams out of the gun. Tariq Muhammad and Little, they're both fighting for the ball. Hey, I'm a defensive back. That should be defensive back ball, but the offensive player generally get this call. They both fell. Hey, the ball's in both of them hands, but the offensive guy will generally get that call most of the time. 22-yard gain. Takes it down to the Georgia Southern 23 with 11.2 seconds remaining in the half. on the snap. Williams waits. Georgia Southern faking a little pressure. Plenty of time on the play clock. Williams throwing. Williams in caught out of bounds at the one yard line. The grab by William Mayfield. the one yard line with five seconds to go in the first half. 
What a catch by Williams. Big time throw from Richie Williams. He guns this ball in there to Mayfield, and Mayfield tries to get in the end zone. Wish he could have extended his body just a little bit, but they're at the one-yard line. Big play, Richie Williams. Georgia Southern takes a timeout. Now, remember this about William Mayfield. He was the starter last year and linebacker. And they put him on the offensive side of the ball. What a grab. Nice catch by Mayfield. I tell you what, if a linebacker has those type of hands, they he should be on offense. He should be on <laughs> offense because most linebackers cannot catch that type of ball. Down to the one-yard line. Down to Corey Kessler. Yeah, Bob, the, the catch right before that by Jermaine Lill, an interesting story. Number 82 actually stole it from the defender as he was falling out of bounds. An interesting story. The second game of the season against Kansas on the road, he was so frustrated at halftime, started yelling at his teammates. Coach Jerry Moore from Appalachia State grabbed him, said, hey, calm down. What are you doing yelling at your teammates? He looked at Coach. He said, Coach Moore, all I want to do is win. You saw the effort. He certainly does want to win. Nice catch over there on the sidelines before the one that was uh, thrown to the one-yard line here. That was a terrific grab. Corey, you're right. And, uh, let's take another look as Little went up and just got this one right away from the defender. And then the recovery. Both of, out of bounds. Both of them wanted that ball. But generally, when it's in both of the guy's hands, the offensive guy, always get denied and that's what happened on that play half state players asking the crowd not to make so much noise so they can hear the signal five seconds to go in the hand play clock at five williams fakes throws intercepted by Moore. Moore down the sideline one man to beat and the first half comes to an end on an incredible interception by John Mooring of Georgia Southern. Second big play by John Mooring in this quarter. He just saved the day for Georgia oh, Southern. I guess so. It was 17 nothing, looking like it was going to go to 24 to nothing. <laughs> and Georgia Southern did not want to go in the half down 24 points. And that is the first interception that Richie Williams has thrown this season. Richie tried to force one in there. Morin read his keys, kept his eyes on the quarterback. Nice hands, made this pick. Thought he was going to take it to the house. But hey, he stopped Appalachia State from putting several more on the board. Be interesting to see how much momentum that gives Georgia Southern going into the half. Well, Appalachia State could not have scripted it any better. Interception or no by Mooring to end the first half. A very happy Jerry Moore is standing by with Corey down the field. Coach Moore, incredible. In 17 to nothing. This team hasn't been shut out in 10 years. You guys, incredible. We're a long way from shutting them out now. I'm telling you that. What did you oh. tell your team before the game? Because it's 52 to 54 to 7 before last game last year. What did you tell them before this game? They came out on fire. Well, we didn't tell them a lot. We had a great week practicing, and you know, I don't think you're going to tell them anything five minutes before kickoff. It's going to make a lot of difference in the game. I think things happened for us after we got back here on Sunday and Monday, and we just had a great week practice, and it's evident right now. If we can finish it off the second half, you know, we're halfway through with this thing. It's a, it'll be a ball game. You can just rest assured of that. Best of luck in the second half, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Coach and Corey. Appalachian, after a bitter defeat at Furman last week, bouncing back and shutting out one of the most prolific offenses in college football. Halftime in Boone, 17-0, Appalachian State. Ready to go, the start of the third quarter here, as Appalachian State leads at 17-0, and they get the football. Jonathan Dudley, the junior for Georgia Southern. Ready to kick it away. Jermaine Little is the deep man at his own four for the men in black, the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. Into the end zone, and that will be a touchback. Moments ago, we heard from Georgia Southern head coach Mike Seawalk. He's standing by with Corey. Coach Seawalk, certainly a surprise. They came out extremely aggressive. What do you have to do to get back in this ballgame? I'm not surprised they were aggressive. I thought they'd expect that out here. Black Saturday, all we got to do is 
again, we had a chance. We thought, we thought maybe had a turnover down there, didn't get it. That one right here, and we don't get those two scores. Good defense right here, not the end. Got to go ahead and convert. Can't settle for field goals. That's something we haven't done. We just got to go ahead and punch it in and get seven points. Credits off to them. I think that they've played really good to this point, but I don't think we've played our best. So we'll see what we've got here, especially for them in the second half. Best luck in the second half. Appreciate it. Set up. Appalachian at first and 10 from the 20. Richie Williams at quarterback. Richie will run it and breaks into the clear right away. Boy, it was just like the seas parted. He had a lot of running room. And Richie Williams couldn't wait to get back out here after this half. Look at it here. He sees his opening. This is a quarterback run all the way. Cuts, cuts up field. Got a very long stride for a quarterback. He's 6'3", but this guy couldn't wait to get back out in this half because of that interception as time expired in the second quarter. He wants to make amends for that play. Richard Williams is going to take this game in his own hands. 20-yard pickup for Richie makes it first and 10 at the 40. Richardson on the carry this time. In the first half, Kevin Richardson, eight carries and 111 yards. Of course, he had 73 in that one big gainer. Richie Williams had 32 yards on the ground and 93 yards in the air. And then you tack on that 20-yard run to start this third quarter. Georgia Southern, Curtis, really, they haven't done anything defensively to change the flavor of this game. Georgia Southern needs a big play. They have to get it from somewhere. Richardson. He's out of bounds at the 47. Jack Sherman came up to apply the hit. Just underway, third quarter in a 17-0 game. And I must credit both ball clubs, a relatively penalty-free game. It's been a nice, clean game thus far. Very competitive, but it just looks like to me that Appalachian State is still a bit quicker off the ball. Georgia Southern has kind of been on their heels most of the game. Let's see what they do in the second half. Williams. Jackson. First down, Appalachian at the Georgia Southern 48. And I fully agree with you, Bob. Georgia Southern hasn't done anything to change the play rough. Look at Williams all day, three-step drop, gets the ball out to, to his wide receiver, corner, four or five steps away. They just haven't done anything Georgia Southern-wise to disrupt the things that Appalachian State is trying to do. Short passing game, sprint out rushes. If they can continue to do that and control the clock, they can put more points on the board this quarter. Williams to the 39, and it will be second down and about a yard. We mentioned it at halftime. Appalachia was clicking off over seven yards per play, and they've done nothing to hurt that average. I mean, when you get big chunks on first down, and you're setting up second down and two, second down and one, well, you're just, you've got everything at your disposal offensively. You can call any play you want. Exactly. And when you have a quarterback with the talent of a Richie Williams, run and can pass the ball, it puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Richardson, five to hold to get the first out to 34. John Mooring the tackle. Got a little help from Muhammad. But this looks very familiar to me, Bob. If you remember, this is exactly how Appalachian State started this football game. Big run. Look at this run right here. Richie hands the ball off to, to his running back straight up the middle, picking up those type of yards. This is exactly what Appalachian State did in the first half. If it's not broken, continue to do it. 14 first downs for Appalachian compared to eight for Georgia Southern. Well, they got pressure on Williams and he options Richardson to the 31. Kevin Richardson on the carry. A.J. Bryant the tackle. The 31 yard line. But that time, Georgia Southern came with some pressure on Williams quickly from the corner, but so cool with that option. Put it right in Richardson's hands. Richardson 
had a lot of open, open field there, but I'm going to give credit to A.J. Bryant. He stayed at home, made a tremendous open field tackle against Richardson. Big play by Bryant. Had he not made that particular tackle, that play could have went an additional 15 to 20 yards. Williams will pass. Got it down the middle. It's incomplete. Toward the end zone, Jermaine Little had it for an instant. And that's the play Jermaine Little has to make. Richard Williams goes back to pass, spots his receiver down the seam, guns the ball in there, defensive back closes. Lewis Barr, again, they've been working on Lewis Barr all day, but thus far, Barr has been coming up, making plays time and time again. But that ball hit Jermaine Little right in his hand. Williams, over the middle, Will Richardson. Ten. Takes a hit to the one-yard line. The determination and the effort of Kevin Richardson to get that ball into the end zone. Richardson wanted to get in the end zone so bad, he actually ran into his own blockers just now. Yeah, bad a shot. <laughs> he about leveled him. Richardson gets this short pass from Williams, hits it up in there, runs into his own blocker. This kid wants to get a second touchdown. He really wanted to get into the end zone. 30 yard gain. He wanted to bat a shot in that whip line. <laughs> Here's Richardson hitting it back of the line of scrimmage. He didn't get hit that hard by a defensive player. <laughs> Not at all. Richardson didn't care who was in front of him just now. He saw pay dirt. He saw his second touchdown of the day, and he was determined to get in there at all costs. TJ Lock gets out of the south for the Eagles. Second down. 10.45 and counting third quarter. 17-0 Appalachian. Richardson the tailback. Williams under center. And on the give to Tennessee. Shot of the goal will be third down. Estrada. I got a feeling... Um, Badishan is going to have a little conversation with Richardson when he gets to the sideline. Nice upfield run here by the fullback. Picked up a couple of yards, but Estrada, strong, strong, strong play in the middle for Georgia Southern. They have to make a stand here. They cannot afford to go down 24 to 0. Yeah, he's an offensive lineman. They put on the defensive line here. Now Williams. Counters, gives, Hennessy, touchdown. The route is on, ladies and gentlemen. Very familiar drive by Appalachia State, similar to what they did in the first quarter. Small ball control type of offense, mixed to run with the pass couple of big plays. That's why the score now is 24 to 0. Roush adds the kick. 24 nothing Appalachian. Hennessy with his second touchdown of the afternoon. Old Mountaineers on Black Saturday. Under zone power. Marcelo Estrada, the sophomore, back to the bench. And Charlie Hopkins comes in to take his place at left guard for Georgia Southern. First and 10 at the Mountaineer 45-yard line. 24-zip Appalachian. Pitch. Jefferson. Good ankle tackle by Corey Lynch. Good. Number 32. Very good opening play after this first down by Foster. He's going to have to get all of his weapons involved right now. But again, just like the first half, they got inside Appalachian State 10-yard line. Still couldn't put points on the board. Two missed field goals. I'm anxious to see what they're going to do with this drive. They have to have points now. Down 24-zip with 7-11 left in this game. 
Georgia Southern need points, and they need points bad. Andrews, that time Chad Boat was knocked back and over, and Andrews tripped over and tried to go through the hole. Orlebar, Daniel, his brother also on the ball club, Arthur. Daniel made the tackle that time. Second down, and we'll call it seven. First time since 2002, the Eagles were shut out in a first half. We talked about the last time they were blank for a game. That was in the one double A playoffs at Montana in 95. 45 nothing, 120 games ago. And with the play clock draining, quarterback Jason Foster calls timeout. 628 left in the period. Still a lot of aggression on Appalachian State side, side of the ball. The defense, again, feels that Georgia Southern cannot put seven points. Timeout. Georgia Southern. First charge timeout. And it comes with 628 remaining in this third quarter. This week's TIAA Craft Student Athlete of the Week is Kara Kern, a member of the Davidson women's soccer team and recorded back-to-back -back hat tricks in wins over Appalachia State and the Citadel. Kara is a senior from La Mesa, California and majors in biology with a 3.48 GPA. For more information on the TIAA Craft Academic Awards Program, go to SoconSports.com. Bob Rathman, Curtis Bayham, and Corey Kessler from Kid Brewer Stadium, Boone, North Carolina. We talked earlier about the get other games going on. Wofford and non-conference win over VMI today. But here's the shocker. Number five, Furman losing by two touchdowns down in Charleston, South Carolina against the Citadel in that game of the fourth quarter. Here, 24-0, 6.28 left in the third. Second and seven. Curtis, I think Appalachian, up front defensively, has done an excellent job staying with that base defense. They pretty much take it away, the fullback dive. They, are, they have been able to control the line of scrimmage. And when you're defending the triple option, if you can control the line of scrimmage and get that penetration that we've been talking about, talking about with Morrell on the outside, it's really nowhere for that triple option to go. Third and five. Foster sends Maynard in motion. Pitch, drop, loose ball. It's picked up by Appalachian. The whistle sounds. Hold everything. Touchstone came up with it. Here's Gene Hartley. Really on the field was it was a forward incomplete pass. And you'll see it right here. It was borderline, but the right call. Borderline. Foster pitches out. I thought it was a pitch. Running backs drop the ball. Corner immediately touched on all over the pitch. That's his man. He has to come up and make this play. He was able to get the ball, but again, I thought it was a legal pitch. But it was borderline. About a yard. Baby. It was about a yard. That's it was about a right yard. Call. Good call by the okay. Now we have a fourth down situation. No field goal here. They've got to go for it. Fourth down and five. Timeout. Second one on the drive. Timeout, Georgia Southern. Second charge, timeout. Well, you wonder if that might come back to haunt them if they get back in this game late. And with a running team like Georgia Southern, they can ill afford to give up timeouts like they've been doing on this drive. This is identical to what's been happening to Georgia Southern all game. They go between the 30s and then they ball down. And right now, mistakes, bad pitch, those type of things have them grounded. Once again, right around the 30-yard line, they have to go for it now, fourth and five. Maybe they have a play that they haven't used thus far. But the penetration 
of Appalachian State has not been allowing them to do what they like to do, which is bounce things to the outside, find seams and creases to run their triple, off, triple option through. Right now, they have to come up with a play to get this five yards because with two timeouts down, they need seven points in the worst way. And if they don't get it, tough, tough, tough road for the Georgia Southern football team. 543, third quarter. Foster under center, Austin behind him. Foster rolling. Foster running. Foster's got the first down to the 18. That keeps hope alive for Georgia Southern. They convert on fourth down. Monte Smith the tackle. Very good play by Jason Foster here. They gave him a run pass option. And with an athlete like Foster who runs the 40 in 4.38, you want to be able to get him outside to put pressure on that on that Appalachian State secondary. They didn't know if he was going to run a pass. He needed that first down, and he had to get it. Foster is smacked down by Suter. He didn't have time to make a play. Joe Suter was in his face. And that's that penetration we've been talking about. Look at Suter here. Defeats the blocker right away and gets that penetration upfield that we've been speaking about. Tell you what, with that type of penetration, an option will never work. Andrews. Good, solid run inside the 10, down to about the 6. Morell the tackle. And even though we're in the third quarter, I got to feel like that clock is a factor. Under five minutes to go. Look at the physicalness of this play. Andrews, tough, tough, tough runner. Lynch flies up there. This kid took on four tacklers just now. And Wiggins, number eight, the number one tackler on the team. And he just brushed him off big time. Foster, nowhere to go, inches forward to the four. Monte Smith was there. Tough, tough inside running today for Georgia Southern. Jermaine Austin and Brandon Andrews, they're going to need the whirlpool after the, after this game. They, I hope they got one on that bus going back to Statesboro. <laughs> they've been taking a lot of punishment in between the tackles all game, and I'll tell you what, they're not going to quit but it's been tough yardage game for those two running backs today. Andrews stacked up, and it will be third down. Third down, and goal to go at the three-yard line. Appalachia State is trying to make their stand again. Ball is on the three-yard line. They do not want Georgia Southern to get into this end zone. This is the 15th play of the drive. Foster. He's in for the touchdown. Jason Foster with 3.20 left in the third quarter. Breaks the spell. And the Eagles have points. Just what Georgia Southern needed. They needed points on the board. Why not let your best player and your, more, your most active player do what he does best, and that's run the football. Ran that little trap, got behind his blockers, got the ball into the end zone. Jonathan Dudley out of the A.J. Bryant hold, and that makes it seven. 3.20 left, third quarter. Appalachian yielding points to the high-powered Georgia Southern offense for the first time today. 24-7 Mountaineers. Well, we've all heard about Black Saturday, but I didn't get the memo about the yellow hair. It's 24-7. Appalachian leading Georgia Southern with 3.20 left in the period. Dudley ready to kick it away for the Eagles. Jermaine Little. A speed man is back at the three to return it. This one will sail out of the end, uh, into the end zone for the touchback. 
a look at the Georgia Southern scoring drive a big fourth down conversion by Foster to keep the drive alive ultimately 15 plays 69 yards and a very physical hard hitting drive it was Foster's three yard touchdown run to put Georgia Southern on the board 24 7 is our score all plays Bob that Georgia Southern had to have their back it was against the wall and it still is I'm going to be anxious to see exactly how this defense now responds to Richie Williams and his onslaught Williams will pitch it to Richardson and the former walk-on is knocked out of bounds at the 26 Lewis Barr credited with the tackle Appalachian Trying to make it five wins in their last six at home over Georgia Southern. One here, 28-21, two years ago. But again, Bob, a big pickup, six, seven yards on first down. It's been the story of the game. It's been the story of the game. Makes it very, very difficult to defend if you're Georgia Southern. Appalachian. 3.14 remaining. Appalachian State, first charge, timeout. 3.14 remaining. And a 24-7 Appalachian advantage. Let's go down to the field and Mr. Whoa. Corey Kessler. Yeah, guys, very interesting. I saw Coach Seawalk for Georgia Southern come over to his offensive linemen and tell them to make a hard cut up the field so that his running backs and his, and his quarterback can just run straight up the field. Look for that next time they get the ball. He also said that NFL Hall of Famer, as we talked to him yesterday, as they were going for a walkthrough, Jim Brown spoke to his players uh, last year and told them, listen, it's your job to stay in bounds, run, run straight up the field and get it into the end zone. So he just told his offensive linemen, make a hard cut up the field and watch for the guys behind them, the guys carrying the ball, to run straight up the field to try to get back in this game. And the next in the offensive lineman was Mike Seawalk at the University of Virginia. And how big is that to have Hall of Fame with Jim Brown coming to Georgia Southern to talk to the running backs and say, look, I hate running backs that run out of bounds. You do not run out of bounds. That will stay with these kids the rest of their days. Over the middle of Richardson. Oh, what a great job he does of keeping his feet. First down Appalachian at the 48. Richie Williams went back to pass just now. Take a look at it. He goes back to pass. He pumps one. He doesn't see what he want to see. Sees, Rich, sees Richardson break free. His running back has been available to him as a secondary option all game. And thus far, every time this kid touches the ball, he picks up big yardage. Williams twisting and turning to the 46 before Taylor made the sack. You know, Bob, I think Richie Williams and Kevin Richardson may have came into this game with a little chip on their shoulder. They had been hearing about Jermaine Austin and Jason Foster quite a bit. Appalachian State is averaging 7.6 yards every time they touch the ball. That's phenomenal no matter what type of game you're playing. Williams to the 42 more of the tackle. We showed you that graphic just a moment ago. The average yards per play for Appalachian today. And it really tells the story of how they have been able to just go at will against the Eagles defense. 7.6 yards per play for the Mountaineers led by that man. Quarterback, the senior from Camden, South Carolina, Richie Williams. And when you're averaging, averaging 7.6 yards per play, that's almost a first down every time you touch the ball. Hard to stop a team that's putting up that type of yardage throughout the game. 17th first down for the Mountaineers. Swing it to Richardson. And this time, the defense was there. Matt Wise, defensive tackle, number 97. 
And it's to the point in this game where Georgia Southern is going to have to do something special. They got penetration upfield right here. The lift flare pattern did not work. But I'm looking for Georgia Southern now to start blitzing or whatever they have to do to put pressure on Richie Williams. Because Williams is sitting back there with all day to throw the ball, pick out his wide outs, to do whatever he wants to do. They have to disrupt his rhythm, and they need to start doing that right now. Little in motion. Williams goes to his tight end, Bettis. And the big man from Roswell, Georgia. Knocked down by Mooring. Shy of a first down. Advancement to the 34-yard line. Daniel Bettis. Roswell High School, 6'3", 245. But again, Richie Williams has no, no problem getting that ball out to his big tight end. No penetration by Georgia Southern defensive line. If he can have pitch and catch like that, it's going to put several more points on the board for Appalachian State. Final seconds. They will have to snap the ball before the end of the period. Play clock shows seven. Richardson could not turn the corner. Thrown out of bounds that time by Muhammad. That stops the clock with 5.4 officially. And it's in the point in the game where, again, Georgia Southern needs to start taking chances and risk. Coming into the fourth quarter, you're down 24 to 7. Your defense has not made any type of stand, basically, other than that pass interception right before halftime. Georgia Southern's defense needs to make some type of play, whether it be fumble recovery, another interception, a sack. They need something that will carry over to their offense. Fourth down. Williams over the middle, and it's incomplete. And that will give Georgia Southern the football with three seconds left in the quarter. First and 10. And the 34-yard Williams goes back to pass, throws it into his slot back coming across. Big time hit. Big time hit. And guess what? That's what I'm that's what Georgia Southern need. They needed a stop. They need to get something from their defense to give to their offense. Let's see if it helps. Foster. On the final play of the period, is going to be tracked down and taken down. At the 28, Monte Smith. Number 38 would not turn him loose. And that will bring the third quarter to an end. The Mountaineers of Appalachian State keeping the beat going in the third quarter. Tennessee with a touchdown run. Foster took it home for Georgia Southern. We go to the fourth, 24-7 Mountaineers. College football on FSN today from Boone, North Carolina. Southern Conference spotlight matchup between Appalachian State and Georgia Southern. 15 minutes of football remaining on this gorgeous Saturday, Black Saturday, for the Appalachian students and faithful here at Kid Brewer Stadium. Bob Rathman, Curtis Bayham, Corey Kessler down on the field. We start the fourth and Foster going to work. Trying to break a tackle, but could not over the 35 to the 37. Again, Monte Smith, an impressive stop. And it's at the point in this game where Georgia Southern is going to have to throw the football. Thus far, they have zero yards passing, Bob. Zero yards passing, and we're starting the fourth quarter right now. The Eagles have attempted only two passes in the game. Foster on the end around on the toss. McCutcheon. Whistle stopped the play at the 38. Hunter with the hit. Big time hit by Jason Hunter. He stayed home. And again, Appalachian State defenders, if they read their keys and do what they have to do, watch Hunter here. 
He does not get baited. He stays where he needs. And, and look at his speed. Turns it up, stops the running back before he's able to turn the corner. Vicious tackle. Ball comes out. Could have been a fumble there, but official had blown the whistle. Move on to the next down. Dan Jordan to punt. Wiggins is going to return this. Jeremy Wiggins moved back to return punts this week in practice. Calls for a fair catch. It's the first time he's ever attempted to return a punt in his career. Appalachian ball, and they are playing with house money, folks. 24-7, Appalachian leading with 13-27 left. Kid Brewer Stadium on a big Saturday crowd in mid-October 2005 for the Appalachian State-Georgia Southern game. Mountaineers with the football, 13-24 to play. And the student body loving it. They've got quite the winning streak here. This would make it 13 in a row if they can hold on to this lead. Last year, they beat number two Furman and number five Wofford in the stadium. Williams out of the gun. Directing an offense that's closing in on 400 yards in total offense for the afternoon. Richardson. Behind his big left guard, Kerry Brown. Gains out over the 10 to the 13. And Richie Williams right now is feeling very, very comfortable. He's sitting back there. They never get in the huddle, first of all. So he's calling his, walking out his cadences and calling his plays from the line of scrimmage right now with a 24-7 lead, 13 minutes left in the game. He would like to put at least seven more points on the board as security. A long drive right now, eat up a lot of clock, may put Georgia Southern out of business. Williams. And that's going to be close to the first down. We'll check the spot. Mooring the tackle. Now the last score we had out of Charleston was 21-7 Citadel over Furman in the fourth quarter. Look at it now. Third overtime. Furman 31, the Citadel 31. As soon as that goes final, and that has major implications for Appalachian State. Richardson stacked up by Mooring. And I don't believe he got that first down, Bob. It will be fourth down and a punting situation. And this is exactly what the doctor ordered for Georgia Southern. They needed a stop. Plenty of time left on the clock if they can mount some quick scores. They need to get a decent punt return here. They should have a pretty good field position. And how about this? It's the first punt of the day for Appalachian. Freshman Matt Dodge to kick it to Lewis Barr. This will get a big Appalachian bounce to the 37. It's been that kind of a day for the Mountaineers. Today's game was brought to you by your Carolina Ford dealers. Driving the Carolinas. By BB&T, Vance Branch Banking and Trust. And by Food Lion. Extra low prices. Georgia Southern trailing 24-7. That turned out to be a 44-yard punt. 20 in the air and 24 on the roll. <laughs> The ball has definitely been favorable to Appalachian State today. Even though it's a heavy wind out there, I don't think it pushed the ball 20, 20 yards downfield. <laughs> Foster from the 38. Swings it to the outside. Big hit that time by Wose. And Morrell. The catch was made by Tim Camp, the freshman. But a first hit by Justin Wose with that interception in the first half. Just muted that play before it could unfold. Second down. After pickup of three, Jermaine Austin carries the mail. 
to the 45. And now Georgia Southern has to be in a hurry-up mode. They need to start doing things differently. That quick pass to just now to Camp, they're trying to open up their offense right now. That's what they're going to have to do to put some points on the board quickly. Side to Maynard. Stays in at the 49-yard line. Much to the chagrin of the Eagles. Wiggins the tackle. Marquise Maynard, a sophomore from Sonoya. Averages 7.4 yards per carry. Look at, look at Foster. He pitches it out, but look at that pursuit from Appalachian State. It's five or six black jerseys over there. They are all over the field right now, and Georgia Southern knows it. Austin tried that quick hitter, stumbled as he got to the 42-yard line. Kelly the tackle. But again, we underscore that Austin has not been able to really break a big play in this game. We call what Appalachian State is doing to Georgia Southern team defense team tackling, we call it putting a hat on the offensive guy, and that's what Appalachian State is doing right now. Andrews pops it up, loose ball. Let's check the pile. Georgia Southern recovers. Kelly knocked it loose. Brandon Andrews on the carry. And that's what I'm talking about. All of, the, all of those defensive guys from Appalachian State want to locate the ball carrier. Put a hat on someone. Look at this. Right now, pull back up the middle. One hat. Look at it. Hat. Ball comes out. Looks like a fumble there. They were uh, unfortunate they did not get the ball for Appalachian State. But each defender is reading his keys properly attacking the football and making plays right now for Appalachian State. Well, the clock operator, please reset the clock to 9-12. Jermaine Austin, 17 carries. And 66 yards. It's first and 10 for Georgia Southern. Austin averaging under four yards a carry on the toss. Maynard. And again, the uh, black shirts outnumbered the white shirts three to one. Penetration inside and outside by Appalachian State. Those defensive players, Morrell. Monte Smith are running sideline to sideline right now. They are saying, we, we're going to dominate this game the rest of the time. It's eight minutes left. They want to dominate this game right now. Boston, gang tackle. And it's not just one guy. Zai Taylor, Zai Kelly making plays. Jason Hunter making plays. All of these defensive guys know if they continue to shut down the middle, make the yards really tough for Austin. Austin's averaging 3.9 yards a carry. This kid typically averages 7.3. They are shutting him down, and that's if they keep doing that, they can win the football game. Throw complete to Jefferson. First down, Georgia Southern at the 17. Jeremy Wiggins defending. But a big grab by Jefferson, the sophomore, 5'9", 177. And Jason Foster fakes to his fullback, Jermaine Austin. And, 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 and look, Jefferson had to make this catch. He had to make this catch to keep those chains moving. Time is a factor right now. Austin to the 14. Pick up a three. Suter credited with the stop. But now I think for Georgia Southern, they need to look at things like play action fakes, some type of thing that can create a mismatch with the Appalachian State defense. The Appalachian State corners has not been tested all game, nor have their safeties. 
up the middle of Austin. Morrell the tackle. To the 10. Shy. Now the big third down here for Georgia Southern. And Georgia Southern has to be in hurry up mode right now. Foster. To the eight. That's going to be very close to a first down. And I believe they're going to have to measure this one. Or maybe not. They're going to say fourth down and one. So Georgia Southern forced to go for it here on fourth down. And one yet long yard to go at the Appalachian State 8. Biggest player of the game for Georgia Southern right now. Foster, and look at West blow through the line to make the tackle. It's Appalachian ball. Georgia Southern is going to ask for a measurement here, I'm sure. I don't think there is any way Brad West just blew through the line. I thought maybe he jumped over one of the linemen to jump on the back of Jason Foster. No need to measure. Mike Seawalk wants it, but I think the official is saying it's not that close. A timeout with 6.18 remaining in the ball game, and 24-7 Appalachian is our score. Four seven Appalachian. We want to show you that fourth down play. There's Brad West, number 33 on the bench. Watch him come from his linebacker spot. Look at West right there. He had he read that play all day. Now watch Lynch. Now watch Lynch. Lynch flies over the crowd, and you know that's what I mean by putting a hat on the the ball carrier. It had to be five or six defenders that was there to make sure Foster did not pick up that first down. 6.18 left. Richardson. Richardson. Over the 25 to the 27. First down, Appalachian. Boy, Kevin Richardson who was a former walk-on here, now a true sophomore. In mid-September was the Southern Conference Offensive Player of the Week. In mid-October, he's leading his team to a big win over Georgia Southern. And Kevin Richardson, the coaches say it, had great vision for a running back. At the 27, first and 10, Richardson, 150 yards on 17 carries. Williams scrambling back to the line of scrimmage. In three overtimes, it is now a final. Furman survives. That would have been a huge upset. 39-31. So Furman maintains a share of first place in the SOCON. Appalachian could have used that win. Remember, last week Furman beat Appalachian. And Georgia Southern is going to be staring at its second conference defeat. Which Five makes, minutes to go in the game. Which makes this game all the more important for both of these teams. Richardson. To the 35. A.J. Bryant, the tackle. But Georgia Southern unable to stop the tandem of Williams and Richardson. Richard Williams and Kevin Richardson right now are controlling the tempo. They have been all game. This young man here, he's playing big time football today. He's been running between the tackles. The coaches told us what type of vision this kid has. But what I like about him most is they also said this kid loves to block. And it's a lot of running backs that make a lot of yardage that do not like to block. Williams. Diving for the first down. Appalachian has gone over 400 yards total offense today. With 4.10 remaining in the contest. Georgia Southern 276. 
Kent Brewer Stadium, Boone, North Carolina. The Southern Conference featured on FSN South this afternoon. And folks, it's been all Appalachian. The Mountaineers stopped Georgia Southern on their first drive of the day. Three and out. Just the second time that Georgia Southern has not scored on a first drive of the game this year. And Appalachian State went on to lead it 10 0 by the end of the first quarter, and this one has not been in doubt. Richardson to the 45. Rico Zachary wrapped him up. All of the playmakers for Appalachian State, Richard Williams, Kevin Richardson, those guys have been making plays when it counts all game. Right now, they are in complete control of this contest. I'm still looking for Richardson to possibly break one more run. He's one tackle away from taking one to the house right now. But again, seven yards every time, every play, 7.3. That average has continuously been there for Appalachian State. Kevin tacks on two more as we approach the three-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Elizabethtown, North Carolina for Richardson. He's played in high. Jerry Moore, the dean of the Southern Conference coaches in his 17th season at the helm. His ball club embarrassed last year down in Statesboro, 54-7 leading 24 to 7 today. Mountaineers milking that clock as they should. Williams trying to find a hole and I believe has the first down. Very close to 48. Another tackle for Zachary. Richie Williams who rewrote the record book here for Appalachian last season at yards, completion, percentage, touchdown passes, and total offense. And Rich Williams here just trying to eat up as much clock as possible, showing what type of athlete he really is. He has been in complete control of this contest from word go. Please reset the clock to 217. 217. As you mentioned, Bob, he's a career leader in almost every category Appalachian State has. Big, tall, physical quarterback, understands how to play football. Whether it's throwing the ball downfield, zipping it in there, Brett Favre type, type, or creating plays with his feet, he's been able to have his way against the Georgia Southern defense all day. Third and inches. And getting back to Kevin Richardson. Timeout, Georgia Southern, third and final charge timeout. Fourth and inch. With the timeout, we'll step aside. 217 left, 24 7. Half ball when we come back. Two minutes and 17 seconds, all that separates Jerry Moore from yet another win here at Appalachian. The winningest head coach in the history of the Southern Conference. This would be, be number 132 of his illustrious career and his 14th straight at home. Fourth and inches. Williams, that extra effort may have done it. I believe that last surge got him that first down. 206. Now as they unpile, we'll check for the spot. And if it's near that 49-yard line, he's got it. Yes, first down, Appalachian. Today's BB&T player of the game is Kevin Richardson. On behalf of Kevin, BB&T will make a contribution to the general scholarship fund of the Southern Conference. At the end of the year, the money will be divided among the member institutions. How about that for a day? 243 total yards. And deservedly so. Kevin Richardson and Richie Williams basically dominated this contest thus far. And, you know, this is Richardson's second player of the week. 
award against Coastal Carolina. This kid had 178 yards rushing. He may break it here. To the 16, Kevin Richardson. And that's the one we were talking about earlier. He was a tackle away from Brent from gaining heavy yards. Look at this. Williams gives the ball. Look at that vision. Bounce to the outside, outruns the corner, and, you know, he's on his way. Safety comes over, makes the tackle, but the coaches told him what type of vision this kid had, and it just showed just then. He was able to hit it up inside and bounce to the outside and showed me enough speed to make the corner. 202 rushing yards for Richardson. That last one got him 35, and he's going to add to it here, straight up the middle. To the 11, Matt Wise with the tackle. And you know, Bob, the great ones and the really good running backs want the ball even when it's a minute left in the fourth quarter. Richardson still looks fresh to me. The rushing record at Appalachian is held by Richie Belcour at 267 in 1989 against Chattanooga. Richardson sitting on 207 for this afternoon. Second down and five. Richie will take a knee, and that will be it. What an impressive victory for Appalachian State. Appalachian State controlled this contest from the first quarter. They ran their offense today to perfection. Last year, dismantled in Statesboro. This year, a different story at Kid Brewer. Richardson, 208 yards. We'll be back to wrap it up after this. The celebration is on in Boone, North Carolina. Appalachian takes Southern apart 24 to 7 and one of the big reasons why the outstanding play up front defensively for Appalachian. Fifth year senior Joe Suter is standing by down on the field with Corey Kessler. Joe, what a big win here on Black Saturday. What does this win mean to you? 24 to 7 over Georgia Southern. Uh, it's just a great way to go out for my senior year. Georgia Southern always gives us a tough game and just to beat them, I mean, it's a great feeling for us, man. We, we know this is uh, just one game, but we got a couple of more, but this is exciting for us. You guys really stepped it up on defense. You came out with a renewed energy. Maybe it was last year's 54-7 to loss in Statesboro in the back of your guys' minds? Uh, yeah, mainly it was last week. For me personally, it was last week's loss to Furman. We know we had to come out here and win this because uh, if we lost this game, then it'd probably be out. we'd probably be out for the playoffs and the conference. Now it looks like you're in the driver's seat for the conference, and congratulations on a big win. Uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, Bob, let's bring in the offensive star of the game, Kevin Richardson. Come on over, Kevin. I see you got a lot going on here. A 208 yards rushing today. Talk about that one run for 73 yards, which seemed to break things up when you got it into the end zone eventually right before halftime. Um, I guess they thought it was a passing play because when no corners in there, it's like everybody spread it out. I saw nothing but green grass and trying to cover it fast. 208 yards. What does that mean to you? What a personal achievement today. I give it up to the old line, man. They came on, they played their butts off. I just found the holes and ran through. 165 wins here on Black, Black Saturday. What a win for you. Now you have 165 at home. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm coming to the bone to play and try to beat it. Congratulations on your win. Take care, Kevin. Back to you, Bob. The 208 rushing yards for Richardson marks the 20th career 200-yard rushing game in Appalachian history. So you can write the name of Kevin Richardson into the record book for all time here at Appalachian. He gave a lot of credit to his offensive line. You heard Suter talk about the defense, a total team effort today for the Mountaineers. Complete team effort. I mean, you're looking at 208 yards rushing from Williams. Um, you know, everybody showed up to play for Appalachian State today. Offense, defense, flying around the ball, completely dominated Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern now 4-3 and three overall, 3-2 three and two in the SOCON. Their title hopes take a severe dent. Appalachians now 4-2 and two overall and 2-1 and one in the Southern Conference. For Corey Kessler, Curtis Bayham, Bob Rathman saying so long. Thank you for joining us today from Boone, North Carolina, College Football on FSN South.